Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to talk about a really nice Blender plugin called Buildify that makes it easy to create and tweak little patches of city buildings like this one. And the best thing is, it's completely free. You can actually get it directly from Gumroad over here, and although you can of course support the author, Pavel Oliva, with a small donation, it's not actually mandatory for getting the add-on files. So just go ahead and get the project on Gumroad, and you basically get a Blender scene that contains the Buildify tool and can be modified to fit your own needs. Cause in a nutshell, the Buildify plugin relies on geometry nodes to easily instantiate and configure a whole bunch of procedural city blocks from just a few base building blocks. This means that simply by dragging around the points of the reference surface, you can change the shape of the city block, and just by modifying the node's parameters, you can change the height of the buildings or the little doodads on them. And even better, just by switching up the base blocks themselves, you can get completely different visuals as shown in the plugin's official trailer. Okay, so let's say we've copied the reference Buildify Blender scene as our own, and so we have this simple chunk of city in the middle. If we go into Edit Mode and press Z to change the Render Mode to Wireframe, we see that the 3D Mesh doesn't actually contain all of the building's parts. In truth, it's only three rectangles on the ground that determine the building floor's shape. So if we select everything and press X to delete the faces, we will effectively empty the game object and remove the city patch completely. That's because as any geometry node system, Buildify needs a support mesh to instantiate the procedural objects on, and now that there isn't any left, it cannot grow the geometry from the basic mesh shape. However, there are still a few objects in the middle of the scene. Those are the reference building blocks, the ones that will be re-instantiated and randomly placed by the Buildify geometry node when we have a support mesh for the system. You see that they are all stored in the Modules collection over here in the hierarchy, and that this collection itself contains sub-collections for the different types of building parts. And if you look at the Geometry Nodes editor, you'll see that the Buildify tool actually uses those various sub-collections in its logic to assemble the buildings before creating the instances. Alright, let's say that now, still in our empty object and in edit mode, we recreate a simple square plane at the origin. We see buildings instantly spring from this base. Those are created thanks to the Geometry Nodes modifier on our object, and they use the square as the support mesh. And what's really cool is that if we then extrude some edge on the horizontal plane, we directly get more buildings. And if we move those points around, we can create more interesting shapes with diagonals and little corners here and there. So in a few seconds, we can create several patches of city with varying heights that all use the same base objects and therefore make for a logical city block. And if you get some groups of doors or windows that you don't like so much, and you'd like the special items on the buildings to be placed some other way, you can always go to the geometry node graph and play around with the seed value in the different groups to get another setup. Then just by adding a few extra planes and trees, for example thanks to Blender's built-in sapling tree generator, we could easily recreate a little scene like the one I showed at the beginning of the video. Now, of course, the great thing with Geometry Nodes is that since they use those base building blocks as reference, you can easily modify or add your own to the set, and thus get extra diversity in your buildings. For example, let's say we hide our buildings for now and zoom in on the reference collections. I'm going to pick this basic wall part and duplicate it. Be sure to keep this new object in the same collection as it is now, otherwise the system won't be able to find it properly. Now we can add a little tweak to this wall, like extruding some parts or coloring them with another material. And if we re-enable our buildings from before, we see that they also randomly incorporate this new part alongside the previous ones. So it's really easy to add new elements to our sets. Now if you want to really change the visuals by using a completely different set, you can either model your own modular building blocks or get some from asset libraries, such as Quicksell's Megascans. This library is a well-known resource that contains dozens of modular building packs, which you can download and set up for using with Buildify easily. However, it's important to note that Quixel has a particular licensing scheme, 
and that they owned a lot of free assets in terms of building packs. To put it simply, since Epic bought Quixel a while back, you can use all Quixel's Megascans data for free within your Unreal Engine projects, once you're signed in with your Epic Games login. But any other usage of non-free assets requires you to pay for one or more seat, as explained on the Quixel's pricing page. Typically, here, if you want to use those modular building packs in Blender, you'll need to get at least a personal subscription. Also, as a final note, the Buildify add-on has a nice OpenStreetMap integration to directly get real-world data from the OpenStreetMap app and transform it into an actual Blender scene in an instant. I won't go into details about this feature here, but if you're interested, feel free to tell me in the comments and I'll do a follow-up on that specific usage. But anyway, with all that said, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about level design tools and that you've got the basics for using Blender's Buildify plugin. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks for watching, and take care.